What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of The Daily Bread. Tyler is on vacation in Mexico. I'm here in Greenville, South Carolina, getting ready for my move back to Miami to sell life insurance policies and absolutely make a killing just like Tyler. Now, in getting ready for my move back, today we're gonna be talking about the top 10 lessons I've learned while working on The Daily Bread vlog. Let's jump right into it. Number one, is surround yourself with the right people. The episodes that really helped me understand this were all the episodes that took place in New York. In particular, the entire storyline that we had with Gerard Adams. First from the episode where we interviewed Gerard and had the idea of the Breaking Bread series, to then spending $1,000 per person to go to dinner with Gerard, and then uh, actually going to that dinner and surrounding myself with top level people and realizing that holy crap, I would have never thought that investing a thousand dollars in a dinner is one of the best, smartest uses of your money you could ever have. You could ever, you could ever employ uh, that type of thing. That type of insight doesn't come to the average person, and it doesn't come to you unless you've personally experienced it. So I highly recommend to you if you want to develop yourself, if you want to uh, get to the top levels in your career change out the people that you're interacting with. Number two, scaling the unscalable. This actually comes from episode number one. I just moved down to Greenville and I hadn't even had enough time to uh, go to sleep in my own bed yet. And I was already in Tyler's office planning out the first episode and planning out the series as a whole. Now in that episode, Tyler describes his plan with the Breadwinner podcast series. And that's this. You can use podcasts to get interviews with top level people. So if you email someone who's a millionaire or a billionaire or, or who's otherwise a success in something that you want to be successful at, well, if you just say, hey, do you want to go get lunch? They're not going to really respond. But if you tell them, hey, do you want to be part of my podcast? I love what you say. I love your words. And I would love to spread that message to other people. Then guess what? They're going to be really willing to sit down with you for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, I mean, our first episode, we had Andy Frisella uh, talk one-on-one -on -one with us. And that was absolutely incredible. Lesson number three comes from the episode Born Hustler. And that's how skeptical people are of free stuff. In that episode, we handed out 300 hashtag AskGaryV books in the middle of a park in New York. And what you don't really see in that episode is just how difficult it was to hand these books out to people because people were just so afraid of gimmicks. And it was a big realization to me how valuable it is to have a reputation that people can trust. I mean, we live in a society where people are constantly selling you stuff, they're constantly spamming you with things, and I mean, you, we, we just handed people out these books and they were running away. One person almost got in a fight with me as I handed out the book to him because he thought I was taking him for a chump or something like that. So. You know, it's really fascinating to me what your reputation stands for and how much easier it will make it when you are trying to market anything, when you're trying to sell anything, when you're trying to help anyone with anything. So control that reputation and understand that people are very skeptical these days because of how bad marketing practices have been. Lesson number four, tell the truth and get other people to tell the truth. I, I learned this uh, during the times that we were talking to Sean Whalen and specifically episode 99, tell the fucking truth. In that episode, Sean got so real and the way he was able to work the room uh, was just absolute magic. Every single eye in that room had a tear in it while Sean was speaking. And that was because he was sharing his truth. He was speaking about the most raw aspects of himself and he was getting real and he was opening up other people to get real. And that, that made me realize, holy crap, when you can do that for other people, that's perhaps one of the greatest superpowers you can ever have. The next lesson is balancing a spiritual journey with your career journey. And this comes from Jesse Elder and Jesse Elder's entire perspective on life. So in the episode on another level, we have Jesse Elder speak on stage and he explains to the crowd that you have people who they basically want the finer things of life they're, they they want to enjoy life for what it is they want to enjoy time with their family they want to enjoy life with their kids they want to enjoy life from the more spiritual aspects of life and then you also have people who are hard workers they're constantly worried about their career they're constantly worried about how they're gonna next get their next paycheck all these different things and he said that you know people are fighting on both sides 
of this. And he said, wait a minute, why do you guys have to fight? Why can't you use the spiritual aspects to aid your career and your career to aid your spiritual aspects? And he describes how he's able to live in the moment and be in a constant flow state because he's balanced his spiritual and career sides at the same time. And watching him speak, it was, it was basically just as masterful as Sean Whalen speaking, and it really inspired me. The next lesson is the importance of content distribution. And this comes from the episode 25 posts per day, featuring Colby K. In this episode, we had Tyler interview Colby on the Breadwinner podcast, and Colby went through a whole masterclass of how he's able to get out 25 pieces of content from one seven to eight minute video that he makes in a week or in a day. And it was just astounding to me because I'd always thought of content creation as you make one thing for one platform. So one video for just YouTube, one video for just Facebook, one video for just Instagram. And I'd never realized just how many possibilities there were for content distribution. Later that night, I'd read a book called Perennial Seller and they talked about omnipresence. The fact that you want to make whatever it is that you're saying appear on so many different platforms in so many different ways that people almost can't even escape it. And when they do that, they'll finally pay attention. The next lesson is on knowing your worth. And this comes from several episodes. The first episode is $876,000. The other one is make it, don't fake it. And the lesson here is that you're not paid based off of just your competence level, and you're not paid based off of just how hard you work. I mean, sure, the Daily Bread vlog, it was originally created so Tyler could show off just how much work goes into him making the money that he makes, but honestly, the lesson here isn't just about how hard you work, it has to be that you're working in something that is well-valued, right? I mean, literally speaking, I go into a meeting with Tyler and in literally two or three minutes, he's able to sell a policy and that policy can be worth more than what I make in an entire week. When it comes to knowing your worth, the point here is that you have to be doing things that are of value and that society is actually rewarding. And if you're not properly rewarded for it and you're not making the money that you wanna make, Maybe, just maybe, it's not about the amount of work you're putting in, maybe it's about the amount of value that other people are perceiving in it. And that's an ugly truth, but it was a hard truth to learn. I mean, I personally experienced it when I realized that in one day, Tyler made more money than I've made in the past seven months. Would I tell you that Tyler works 180 times harder than I work? Absolutely not. But the fact is that we live in a world where it doesn't matter if you're creative, it doesn't matter if you're putting out a bunch of videos, it doesn't matter if these videos look completely different from everybody else's. The fact of the matter at the end of the day is that that's not quite as valued and you can go ahead and make more money doing something else. In fact, that's literally why I'm leaving this job anyways. So let's move on to the next lesson. The second to last lesson is the art of conversation. And I learned this lesson with the interviews and the talks with Jonathan Parker. Jonathan is a master conversationalist. I really enjoy talking to him every single time I see him. I almost can't talk to him while I'm working because I know that I'm gonna just get lost for hours in conversation with him as we build things. And that's really the key to the art of conversation. It's that instead of trying to be adversarial and instead of trying to set up these arguments where you're proving that one person is right and the other person is wrong, instead you go at things as how can we build something new out of this? And the biggest lesson here is to ask how questions and what questions instead of why questions. A lot of people ask why questions and this automatically sets it up where you're breaking down the other person and not building things up with them. An honorable mention here before I get to the last lesson is riches in niches. So this was an episode that not too many people viewed but it's an incredibly important episode and that's that you wanna figure out the niche that you wanna work in and if you know that niche, you handle that niche, you speak that niche, you understand the values of that niche, you understand the mission of that niche, then you can come in and you can set up space and really dominate that niche and make a ton of money. The last lesson, the most important lesson that I learned while working here on the Daily Bread vlog is actions over ambitions. Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, actions over ambitions is the biggest, biggest lesson to be learned with the Daily Bread vlog. 
by far. It's not even a question about it. Every single person that we found that is a success in their lives, doesn't matter if we're talking about money, if we're talking about mind, if we're talking about body, if we're talking about relationships, any of these things, the people who are successful, they don't talk about whatever it is they're gonna do, they just go ahead and do it. And the level of execution that they have is mind blowing. They don't just come up with an idea, it's that as soon as they say the idea, within 48 hours, they're already executing on it. For example, we met with uh, Corey from Core24 and he had ideas for his gym and boom, he just executed on it and he started working with Tyler. Uh, we talked to Gerard Adams and boom, he just does exactly what he's about to do. We talked about uh, Sean Whalen, he's creating his own platforms, his own things, boom, he just gets it done. All of these guys, their philosophy, their, their proof for what their wishes are is not in words, it's not in their social media accounts, it's purely in their actions. So ask yourself, how closely do your actions match what you want to be creating in your life? And the degree to which there's a difference between that, that's the degree to which you're gonna be struggling, you're gonna be facing difficulties, you're gonna be suffering in your life, and that's the degree to which you're gonna be a failure. So forget all of your talk. And this applies to morality, this, this applies to politics, this applies to relationships, this applies to everything. Like, don't talk so much, just do it, right? Just execute on it. And it's that execution factor that's gonna uh, take you on a journey to being a great person. So, hey guys, thank you so much for watching The Daily Bread. I'm TJ, uh, I'll see you guys next time.